Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to explain to you the easiest possible method to produce high quality compost that we can then use for the compost extract fertilizer that we can then use for compost teas, which will be coming on this channel, more of that. Uh, also, we can just straight up add it to the garden. There's no end to the uses for good quality compost. But here's the thing, it has become wildly overcomplicated when it does not have to be. So I'm gonna say some things about it and then I'm gonna take you outside and show you exactly how to do this so that you can start producing high quality compost with very little work input, all right? So we have to understand first that there are essentially two types of compost. There is the slow compost and the fast compost. The fast compost requires a certain ratio of carbons to nitrogens for optimal performance. And it requires that you uh, turn the pile uh, very often. It requires that you keep it a certain level of moisture, that you keep it covered, yada, yada. And I'll be making videos uh, this summer about how to create fast compost. And then you get compost in three to four weeks doing it that way. Uh, it's very good, but it's very labor intensive. So the other method is slow compost. And with slow compost, once we build the pile, as you will see here in a moment, and we build the structure, you don't do anything else. You just add your stuff on top and you collect your stuff from the bottom. This was all made with the slow composter. Okay, so second thing we have to understand is how, what is the best way to compost? Well, to figure this out, we look to nature, of course, who is the original sustainable agriculture rural list. And so uh, we see that the way nature composts is like this. All things living in the natural system, when they die, they fall on top of the earth and then they decompose and they become uh, life once again. They become soil, they become food for the microbes, they become nutrients for the plants and things eat the plants and the cycle of life continues like this, yes. But everything falls on top. If you go to the forest, you will see that the plant matter falls on top of the soil and it decomposes that way. But if you dig down a little bit and you see underneath dark, rich, beautiful black gold, full of microorganisms and nutrients, everything that the forest would need. So we can replicate that with the slow compost. And so in the slow compost, as you will see here in a moment, we are going to create the pile and then we are gonna add things on top. We never flip the pile, we never turn it, we never, uh, we never do anything. Once we set it up, all we do is just collect our goodness. So let us go outside and I will show you how to make this pile, how to get it all set up, and then we will come back in and I will tell you the specifics about what you put in and what you cannot. This has become way overly complicated and it doesn't have to be. I'm gonna simplify all that for you when we come back. Okay, first thing I like to do is rodent proof the compost bin. Guys, if you wanna see a tutorial on how to rodent proof your compost bin, just let me know. But here in the city, you have to, otherwise you're just feeding the rats and that's no fun. Next step, we want to rake clean the area where it's gonna go. We always want our compost bin in direct contact with the earth, this is important. So then we're gonna set it on the earth. Guys, if you want this exact compost bin, I'll put a link in the description, you can go ahead and pick it up. Okay, and so with the compost bin directly in contact with the earth, we're gonna to start to build the base. Now for the slow compost pile, you can just start adding whatever scraps you have available, but you will get a lot better results and you'll get compost a lot faster if you build a base. So here we're building a base. We're gonna alternate layers of browns and greens. Browns preferably are leaves, leaves or dried grass clippings. See, worms love leaves. You see all them worms in there? And we're gonna layer that with uh, even brown cardboard, that can be a brown. Uh, and we're gonna layer it with the green. So either a manure or an unfinished compost or a um, green grass clippings, all of that can be the greens. So we're just gonna layer them. Don't worry about the ratios or anything like that. Just put a layer of each, pack it down with the shovel like this. Even for a brown, one layer of the brown, I added uh, some ground, ground out old stump that the neighbor had. Uh, and then for the green layer, I'm gonna add some chopped up uh, uh, spoiled produce and stuff like that. You see these worms love this uh, Brussels sprout stalk, so I'm gonna make sure that they get in there. And then for one of the layers of brown, I'm gonna just add some uh, brown paper sacks. And like this, now I'm gonna add some really rancid kind of unfinished compost uh, because it had uh, gotten way too wet. But it's okay, it's still good because we're going to revitalize it here. It's still uh, just bursting with life. 
Uh, and then I'm gonna add some activator, and this is just one of the JLFs. Whatever liquid fertilizer you have, you can add that in there, and that's gonna help to supercharge everything. Now, we're gonna add our final layer of brown. And now, you're going to just shut the lid after we pack it down a little bit. We're going to uh, leave it like this, and now the pile's ready. So then, every time that we uh, have scraps from the kitchen, we're just going to come out and we're gonna add it directly to the top, like this. And we're not gonna concern ourselves at all with the ratio of this to that. And here you go, spoiler alert, guys. You can compost anything. This is old fish stew that the monks gave me some time ago. This is cabbage with some bacon in it. All of it gets decomposed, guys. In nature, everything decomposes. Even an animal's entire body decomposes. Uh, periodically then, after I add a little bit of that, I'll add just a handful or two of the brown material on top. And that keeps it from smelling. It keeps everything real nice. So that after a couple of months, you will start to see this process happening to where the bottom of it, when you open it up, will be rich with this organic matter. So the top will look like this. We will have our food scraps here. You see how, oh, these are flats of wheatgrass. And the worms love the flats of wheatgrass that I had during the wintertime. They also love the cabbages. You see here, I pick up the, just the whole cabbage. I'll throw it in there like that, and the worms love to devour it. So that after a couple of months, you will have these layers forming so that the bottom is going to be just uh, producing high-quality compost. And it happens much faster than you might think, guys. And this is how we produce bucket loads of high quality compost with almost no work. Okay, so that is the system, my friends. Now comes the question, what can I add to this pile? And more importantly, what can I not add? Now, it's become wildly confusing in the internet uh, stratosphere of, of uh, composting. You have to add only these certain things and then not this and but only that. Guess what, guys? You can compost anything. I'll say it again. There's nothing that is edible or that is living that you can't add to your compost pile. Even meat, even eggs, dairy, I add all of it, okay? And I have killer compost and killer results because nature composts everything. Your body will eventually return to compost. Mine too. Everyone's does. All living things do. So in the slow compost method, don't even worry about it. Anything that comes from your kitchen, you can add to the top of that pile. And those worms and those microorganisms will break it down into this stuff. I just want to show you this. Even in finished compost, you'll always find the eggshells because eggshells take years to become plant available in the natural system. That is why we do the vinegar solution. So that's pretty much it, my friends. If you feel like you gained something from the video, give it a thumbs up. Also, share the video with anyone that needs this knowledge and leave a comment. Just share your thoughts, whatever it is. And check out the links in the description. All kinds of good stuff you guys can be looking into. Check out the Garden Like a Viking Instagram account where I'm doing uh, reels and stuff about things I don't want to make full videos about. And I will see you guys in the future. Remember, every Saturday at 12 noon Eastern time is the live Q&A.